Ooh, welcome back to Thursday Night Football Preview. I'm excited for this game. No, you're not. You, you got me. The Panthers play the Bears in Chicago over under 38 and a half. The Bears are three and a half point favorites. We're not going to be able to say that often in this year. Without Justin Fields. <laughs> Tyson, Bay, the D2 undrafted player is leading them. They're more than a field goal. We basically know him. He played gut in football. Facts. He does feel like a guy. I feel like him and gut would get along, like just on a personal level. For sure. For no reason. They'd be arm wrestling each other for sure. Facts. He is basically who gut wanted to be, I think. <laughs> gut, yeah. He's like gut's idol. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about this game just in its totality. Anything that we could squeeze out excitement wise. I just go over the preview. Favorite underdog squares, key injuries, things to look forward to in terms of fantasy football because we're all going to watch because of fantasy football, pretty much. Uh, nothing to worry about in terms of the weather. A little bit chilly, but clear skies. A lot of injuries on the Carolina front. Like, obviously, J.C. Horton's been out for a while, but Brian Burns. Justin Houston. Justin Houston. <sighs> Huge. Major. Shaq Thompson, C.J. Henderson. So, some guys have been out for a while, but overall, the defense was one that kind of like came into the year as one... Uh, one that maybe could have been underrated, like they could have been a nice little defense, but I feel like they've lost all their pieces at this point where they're just terrible on both sides of the ball. Chicago, Fields is out. Uh, Tremaine Edmonds is a big one for them. The rest of them are just kind of whatever at this point. So Tremaine Edmonds overpaid, overrated anyways. Sure. Storylines for the game. Uh, I think Bryce is getting a lot of attention for just now being compared to C.J. Stroud, which I don't think is unfair. Like I get that C.J. Stroud is playing at a crazy level, Bryce is not really doing himself any favors here, right? Like, if you're going to be the one pick, and Stroud's going to be the two, you guys are going to be connected for your entire career. Yeah. It's At be the a beginning of the season, would you have said he's in a better spot than CJ Stroud? I mean, they're both Just dog overall shit. personnel? Team, yeah, personnel players. Um, I feel like maybe not, because you would even say before the season, Thielen's washed, and he's kind of proved that he's not. I, I, I'm i trying to think of unbiasedly. I, I, I do think I would have taken Stroud's situation. situation, but I don't think I would have confidently been like, Stroud's going to play better than Bryce, yeah. even with the situation. Because I do think they invested a lot in bringing in, you know, investing into Tank. Uh, even like things like Robert Woods and Dalton Schultz is like putting pieces around them. And they invested in the offensive line, trading for Shaq Mason, all those things. Felt like they were moving in the right direction. Whereas like Bryce, it was like, you have to be the savior of the city. Yeah. Or, you know, we're not going to help you. You got to do it all on your own. Which, when you're the number one pick. Save you. Realistically, savior. like, Panthers probably should have dished anybody else outside of DJ Moore to help Bryce Young. Like, you could have you could have probably given up Brian Burns instead. Yeah. Yes. To be fair, though, Thielen has been everything that DJ Moore has been. That's fair. But, I mean, it would have probably helped if there was, like, another Adam Thielen. Sure. If he could have had, like, a Cooper Cup Puka dynamic there with two players. Absolutely. Is he just bad? Would it have mattered? Bryce? Yeah, would it have mattered? What is your guys' actual state? Because I, I listen to a lot of podcasts throughout the week, and I think there are people who are genuinely like really concerned about Bryce Young. And it's probably easy to be like, oh, I'm not worried about his long term future because you can kind of push that off for two years. But I am in that camp. I'm. I'm, I'm not, you are worried. I'm not. No, 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 no I'm not. I'm. I'm not writing him off, but I was never a huge fan, so I don't like. I'm not calling him a bust. It's way too early, regardless of what team he was on, what he's done so far. But I've just never been a huge fan of him. I think he's right handed to a no. That's so disrespectful to Tua. Is it? You don't I, think he could be Tua? Like, I think accuracy is what he's going to rely on. I, f I feel like they're, pro like, as prospects, they were, I, I agree. I think they were so similar. Like, Tua coming out, no one was ever like, he's got a strong arm. They were just, like, pinpoint accuracy. A little bit undersized. I actually think, like, he's smaller, and I don't think his arm is as strong as Tua. Is. Like, I don't, I don't see a ceiling I'm in love with. You're, yeah. And maybe that's I'm just too was, addicted to the home run was. swing. Like, I want the guy with the upside, but I don't know. I don't like the ceiling of Tua. I mean, I go back and forth on Bryce Young. Some games I watch the Panthers, and I'm like, dude, this team sucks. And Bryce Young, there's, like, no chance he can succeed. Other times I'm like, no, it's just Bryce Young sucks. And, like, it, he's the fucking problem. I'm also convinced Frank Reich didn't want him. 100% didn't want him. Obviously, I thought they were I going nothing. with Stroud, I'm sitting too. on a couch. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess. Well, did you see uh, Josh McCown used to work for Underdog? Yeah. And he did, like, a thing like, in the offseason when he worked for them, like, oh, my favorite QB this year is C.J. Stroud. And Josh Norris did, like, a series together. Yeah, yeah. and then he got hired by the Panthers. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't even take Josh McCown. He's, like, the QB coach. Or, yeah. They didn't take C.J. Stroud. Yeah, that's what We're I mean. yeah, yeah. trying to connect the dots there, I remember. But, like, even Josh couldn't really pull – Josh Norris, underdog, couldn't really pull any insider info from them. They were just as lost with, like, who they were going to go with. But mm -hmm. he, he agreed. He was like, they love – 
Josh McCowan loves CJ Stroud. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that, but that was the thing though. I think it was like ownership wasn't listening right. to any of the coaches, whether it was Frank Reich or any of the assistants, like they, they just were set on Bryce Young and for whatever I think reason. Just that maybe resentment the coaches have could just ruin Bryce. That could be a problem for a while. Yeah. 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 And that's Do you think a like, hard funk to get out of? Like there's probably no way that this is the case. Cause like this looks bad on Frank Reich, but do you think part of him's kind of like good? No, <laughs> not good. Just like kind Told of, you. yeah, a little bit like told you so. Like I told you this guy sucks. Like this ain't on me. I'm well, kind that's of what I mean. Frank like Reich. good in the, in yeah. the sense of like, look what you did now. Sure. Kind but of. Yeah, yeah. I think most franchises are going to choose a, like he's just going to lose his job again. Yeah, yeah, probably. I'm kind of a Frank Reich defender. Like he's never had the same quarterback back to back years. Like I'm defending that. I'm I'm so over. He him. took the Colts job hoping to get luck, and then it went from luck to Brissett to Rivers to Matt Ryan to Carson Wentz. Like brother can't do anything. Yeah, you know? every I mean, in my eyes, the way I look at like the NFL coaching circle, it, it's like the quote from Batman. It's like you you die. What is it? You die. Live along, live long enough to see yourself become the villain or die a hero. Yeah, you, I said yeah. it. I said it in the wrong order, but that's what it is. That's what it is, and that's how I feel about every NFL coach. Where even when we were on the couch before. And he gave me Mike Tomlin we were, when we were playing Wavelength. Mm-hmm. And my number was 59. And he gave me Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin's not a 59. No. As a, that when was you look, horrible. And when I was like, when I was thinking it through, when I was talking in the microphone, J- Jack, obviously a Ravens fan, but I heard the chirps from the side being like, he's not higher than what you're thinking mm-hmm. or whatever. I'm like, dude, Mike Tomlin's record is literally historic when you look he's at... He's a top 10 head coach. Right. Yeah. And better than that, dude, the number of years in a row that he's gotten to see in the playoffs have been above 500 in a sense. But that's what I mean. Like, a coach coaches long enough, Bill Belichick. Seven, five Super Bowls isn't good enough. Eventually, you become the villain and everyone's like, you're not actually a good coach. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I think yeah. of with every fucking coach that's in fair. the NFL, to be honest. But Frank Reich has, like, never been good, though. Got As Andrew a Luck's coach. best year out of him. I, Got Joe, Kobe Reset to be, like, 500. He took Philip Rivers to the playoffs. I think he's a classic case of... Good coordinator, wasn't cut out to be a head coach. Fair. I think a lot, yeah. I think a lot of coaches fall into that as well. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just, I, Frank Wright can't be a head coach. Sean Payton, an incredible stint with the Saints. Now he's with the Broncos. It's all going to shit. Now he sucks. Now he's, he's the villain. worst coach ever. Yeah. Russ is so held it's back. back. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Like we'll back. never know the full equation here because there it's like is it the quarterback is it the co- coordinator is it the coach like just never fucking know I guess all, all in all with Bryce it's what what can you really do in the situation I guess you can ask the same thing with Stroud but don't the Panthers have to win this game just out of principle like you forfeited yeah part of your future to get the number one pick from this team and now you're gonna like flat out lose to them it's tough yeah they yeah. have your pick. You can't you, lose you to this think. team. It's Just, such a win-win for the Bears. <laughs> the Bears. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh, you gotta be feeling great if you're a Bears fan at this point. I don't know if I go that far, but I mean, imagine being the dude. The Bears like came into the season though with like optimi- Like Wilson is his family yeah, from yeah. Chicago, diehard Bears fan. He's like, dude, I was so excited for the football season this year. Like, it literally actually bad. couldn't have gone any worse. Yeah. It couldn't. But you have you either have Fields or you have. Two of the top three picks. But that's the thing. Yeah. Like, it would have been nice to know, do we have fields? Now it's like, oh, he's hurt. Could he still? Like- now it feels like he's going to be back for four weeks at the end of the year, and his entire career rides on those four weeks. That's yeah. true. It, it probably would have been better just to get a definitive answer on Justin exactly. Fields rather than this murky situation that it is. I think that was, like, best case scenario for the Bears coming into the year. It was, like, maybe not even be a playoff team as an upper echelon goal, but... You got him or you don't. Do you we know? know yeah, do we know yeah. what Justin Fields? And that's is. what I like that the Bears did during the offseason. Even though they got rid of Roquan, like adding DJ Moore, just being like, okay, we're gonna put our defense on pause just to give this guy a chance to thrive on offense. See yeah. what we see if we have a franchise. But they got rid of Roquan and paid Tremaine Edmonds like eighteen mil a year. Like, what do you do? pay the extra two mil to get the All Pro guy? I I guess that's fair. Yeah. They, I don't like DM. I also, I mean, it's also tough. They have Montez Sweat getting twenty minutes. Like, yo, what Montez do we Sweat kind of looked nice though in that for like that could be. Montez Sweat's a good piece. I, yeah, I mean, a nice edge rushers are a premium. Addition. Like, you're gonna have to pay any edge rusher that that comes out in free agency, anyways. I don't. I guess I don't necessarily hate that. They they have a new coach this year, Matt Eberflus. He's not he's like there. new new. He's, he's been so mid. He's been their head coach. This is his second year. Okay. Okay. Never mind. He's no. gone. He just seems like they just need a restart. He's easily the scapegoat. Do you like, remember? He's the most, you, oh yeah, most scapegoatable person of all time. Do you remember last Thursday night preview against it was Bears versus Commanders? They, Eberflus was the key part oh, of that win. Yeah. I don't remember that. He's gonna like no, unlock. The Bears have been on Thursday night two night two weeks in Dude, a row. We've already done no, this not Bears in a row, game. but just two yeah. two Thursday nights. It's probably games. like week four, oh. week five. One of the DJ Moore Justin yeah. Fields blow up game. Okay, that I remember. I thought yeah. you meant last week. But this week, no difference. Eberflus is that man. Uh, 
I don't know about all that. Yeah, um, no, he's, he's for sure getting fired. The, I guess another interesting kind of storyline, just as it relates to fantasy football, which we'll kind of segue into, Phil Herbert is off the IR, and he's practicing in full, so he comes back to that backfield. He's yep, back? I think so. Oh, I should really... Hold on. Let me confirm that. No, I think I, I think I saw something. That he's I definitely practicing to... in full, but I don't know if that actually means... I need to fix some rankings. I think that just means you don't want to start any of the Chicago Bears yeah. running backs. It, it gives less touches to Foreman, who... Really wasn't efficient anyways. It's questionable for for Thursday. Yeah, don't start any Bears running back. I, I don't I don't think the take is that simple, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. I Herbert's practicing in full and I think he's active. Roshan is without a doubt. Roshan's droppable at this point. Mm-hmm. They're playing the Panthers, right? So it's like I I kind of do still feel like Foreman is probably the one A here for one more game where he he's probably getting fifteen plus touches. I don't know what it amounts to, but I don't think this means like Foreman's auto sittable. I don't think it means everybody's auto sittable. I think you could do worse than Foreman right now. You could do worse. It's just not much worse. I would not love it. Like I would start Foreman over Miles Sanders. That's yeah, fine. Fair. Thank you. <laughs> just so yeah. gross. Maybe it's just cause I'm like, I've never put myself in that situation. It's easy for me to say. You only have RB1s. I'm ones. so selfish. <laughs> I only think about myself, but yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking about people's like flex problems that they're in right now, and I don't, I don't think Foreman's like an auto sit just because Khalil Herbert is back from the IR. No, he's not. I, I think mean, he's earned out a role, and like sure. a role against the Panthers could be a semi valuable one. I mean, I'm actually in a league where I'm considering starting Foreman. It's either like him or Romeo Dobbs. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't Go feel Romeo great either Dobbs. way. That's who? Do, who does? Who the Packers play this week? Steelers. Packers play the Steelers. Oof. Uh, I know. It doesn't matter. Like, you know what's weird? I'm considering starting Foreman. I'm also considering dropping him. <laughs> like, that's where I'm at with him. That's fantasy football, pretty much. So you've got Young and uh, Bajan. I mean, both comfortably outside of, you also know, bad. startable range. You do have Bryce as a QB 23, which is kind of startable in Superflex. Yeah, least. it is. And Bajan popped off for 70 rushing yards. It's just kind of like. You a believer? I kind of like him. I kind of do too. He's just got some swag. That's I actually like don't like. think he's that bad of a. He's no. n- he'll never be like awesome, but I he's not. Th- he's there enough. are a lot of bad quarterbacks. In he's this enough for when Fields comes back and sucks for you to be like bring in like <laughs> some <laughs> fucking riots to yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, he's he's not like Devito or like those types of backups where you're like, okay, everything just becomes everything is toxic. <laughs> you now. watch Devito and you're like, how the fuck did this dude make it here? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like practice squad, what just the hell? Behind yeah. the line of scrimmage, screen pass to Saquon. Bajan's time. got a little bit of sauce to him. He yeah, he he can like yeah. make other players like actually usable. At some I mean, points. you saw yeah, Cole Komet's like his hero. That yeah, hell yeah. Let's move the running backs outside of Foreman, outside of Chicago. Chuba and Miles. I mean, this is completely they, kind of dispersed at this they point. Love Chuba. He's not even good. No, he's not good. But it, he's. It better feels than like Miles. last year when CMC left, they didn't even really like let him cook like that. He's been like really. But inefficient now that they paid career. Miles Sanders a bag, it's like now we're gonna use him. It's a little. The, it's a little weird. Hell? But Chuba's been getting a lot of work. I think he's had over 15 carries in each of the last three games. Whether or not Miles is healthy. I think for a while they kind of masked it with Miles being unhealthy. It was an anomaly, but he also had six targets last game. Yeah, I don't expect him to be too involved there, but the volume floor feels good. Well, the Bears give up the most receiving yards to running backs. Not that they're going to design play Chuba screens or rollouts, but it's something. Yeah, they also have a new play caller in Carolina too, which I feel like has shifted targets a little bit, and it, it could be more more uh, Chuba action. I have a league where I'm probably starting Chuba. This, this I started him last week, PPR. He's got me like 11, but... I kind of expect, you know, somewhere from like 9 to 12 mm-hmm. in that range. And I feel I feel relatively comfortable with that. So he's he's a high-end RB3 for me. I think that's a good ranking. So real quickly, this is the second week of the new play caller. The this is, this week, is going to be the third. Th- yeah, sorry. This is going to be the third. Mm-hmm. I, what I meant to say is there's been two weeks. One was against Indianapolis where I thought Bryce Young and the Panthers offense looked pretty serviceable. It looked like, okay, this could be a solution to this horrible offense. But then they played last week against... Um, you met, I think he met Houston, and then this week they played. Yeah, Indy. sorry, I got that backwards. They looked good against Houston, and then against Indianapolis, like Bryce Young couldn't read a goddamn thing. Thielen didn't do shit. Yeah, that was that was a tough outing all around for them. So I'm, I almost we feel don't like, have an answer. This is why we shit talked him earlier. What was the question? I was just gonna say I feel like the play calling either was just like a lateral move <laughs> Best or of even three, like a step this back. This matters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it probably just didn't matter. It, yeah, I, I, I doubt it really matters. It, it's almost like. I heard this. It's like they're picking off. You can order something different, but you're still picking off the same menu. So it's kind of like, like Mexican restaurants. That's a good line. <laughs> that's a nice bar. Every every food is some sort of combination of combination of chicken, rice, 
beans and peppers. It's like you can get it yeah. in a taco, you can get it in a quesadilla, you can get it in a burrito at the end of the day. Your ingredients suck, they just suck. It's still Bryce Young. Yeah. yeah. Still Chipotle. Welcome. Wide receivers. We got still DJ famous. Moore at 17. So you still feel... Am I a little high on Moore? I don't know off the top of my head. Because um, it feels like he's like Chris Godwin. I was like, yeah, he's going to get you 5 and 50. Yeah, my... my I, the, the matchup is so good, but I almost feel like That's with Bajan, it's just kind of like, I don't know if matchups matter. It's more just like, is he okay or not? Yeah. I love the He's still getting like around six targets again. <laughs> Dude, there's a lot of revenge in this game. Dante Foreman? Yeah. Andy Dalton? You that, shitting me? That's how bad teams stay bad. Andy Dalton. They, they need to let they Andy keep Dalton shifting rip. teams. I, also, let alone the fact you said earlier about the Panthers just needing this because they gave their pick. Yeah. Yeah. More, I mean, listen, he, he, like you have him 17. I think my instinct would probably have him like 20 to 24. But at the end of the day, it's still wide receiver 2, and he's still probably in your lineup. So I'd start him. Thielen, wide receiver 10. Yeah, that's probably right on. Mingo's the only other like notable receiver you have here. Mooney's was in that same range. He kind of cooked last week, but I don't expect that to be a consistent. Yeah. I don't hate uh, Mingo's. Mingo's like damn near 100% player, like full time player right now. Yeah. It's a matter of absolutely fucking nothing. I'm hoping he ticks up, but that's just me being. There's nowhere else to that's go. That's just me listening. He's on the field every all, right, all day. I'm, I'm listening to gut and I'm absorbing a lot of what he says. And I'm in on Mingo now. Man, gut probably swears the Panthers are winning this game. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be his gold slip for sure. Yeah. His gold oh, one. man, dude. I can't oh, believe I bet yeah. on the fucking Panthers. Uh, Cole Komet, tight end eight. Yeah, he's a, he's a tight end one. Him and him and uh, Bajan have had a really good chemistry, it seems like. And Komet looked fucking so good, dude, dude. last week. He had a nice snag. He's pretty nice. A couple nice snags in the end zone. Yeah, he's, pre- he's, he's pretty, pretty, pretty good. We're going to give you some pretty, pretty, pretty bad underdog slips right now. The free square on underdog is Bryce Young. 0.5 passing yards. We talk a lot of shit about him, but I'd imagine he goes over this line. So if you're new to underdog, use promo code BDGE when you sign up for the first time, and they're going to match your deposit up to $100, and you will get this free square on your app. If you join after Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever, they have free squares going throughout Sunday's games on Monday, whatever, so you won't miss out regardless of when you get on the platform. Dude, Bryce Young could be such an icon in this league if he was half good. Like, he's got the face. Don't do that. He's got, not, does he not though? he's not he's but got he the does. face but then you see his whole body and you're like brother yeah too short yeah. You, he needs to like does he this have needs the face? to stay i think he's, I would. he's got the face whatever it doesn't matter I'm, I'm just mad that he's so fucking bad right now my favorite square on this slate is the chuba over 43 and a half rushing yards just because there's not a worry about me i think the only way he goes lower than this was if miles sanders is like forcing a committee again and i, I feel like they've so clearly shown that they don't want to do that. I was that. hoping they'd throw up a carries line and that'd give me like a rough estimate. Like, is he going to get 15 again? Uh, he's been consistently, it's like 18, 16, 15. Mm-hmm. I think he's getting a minimum 14 and you have to be, I mean, that's three yards to carry. You have to be bad yeah. to not be able to hit 44 rushing yards if you're getting 14 carries. He's, he's, this, he, he's you're right. He's bad, but like Chicago, with that. I get it. Like Chicago's run defense is like, it's cool to say that they're really good right now. I don't think they're like anything Super special. So Chuba, higher than 43 and a half rushing yards, I feel like is a very, very safe pick. Did you erase my notes, my huh. Derrick Henry thing? So la- I just want to point this out. Last week, I did that math. I was like, oh, his line's at 17 and a half carries. If he's even gets 17, he, gets 70. he got that exactly. 74 yards, 70, 17 wow. carries. TikTok math. Do you, really do you know why... In. You know why I just did this? Chuba gets 14 carries. Times I said three. if he gets three yards yeah. per carry. I went back, watched the notes, and I was like, J-Mo was fucking onto something there. And then I integrated it into mine. Tony? All right, I'm going to take the lower of Terrace Marshall having 27 and a half receiving yards. This is easy, Matt. That feels high. Dude, this feels incredibly high. did they just high. say, like, give him permission to seek a trade? And then he couldn't find a trade. Yeah. And then so they just buried him in the depth chart. <laughs> Holy they were shit. just like, I don't even know why this is a thing. I mean, week one against Atlanta when he was kind of a part of this offense and got six targets, didn't hit this line. Week two and three, he did hit it. He was heavily involved with eight and ten targets but for the last three weeks we're looking at three targets one target one target in the last three weeks he has nine yards combined it makes no sense why they'd even have a terrace marshall lineup anymore he's not playing more than mingo he's not playing more than My Thielen God. or um who's the, who's their third he's their fourth receiver there's no dj Char. chark is playing more than him mingo's 100 percent, basically at Thielen's 98 percent. chark is 95 50 percent uh, LaVisca might be playing more no, than I No, nah, they're not hurt. playing. It, it, it's Marshall as like the four, but yeah, no, that that's a I like that line. It's a, a lot. deep four. It's a deep four. Yeah. It's it, yeah. It's it's a four on an offense that is bad. Has like 175 passing yards a game. Yeah, I'm surprised this dude even had a line. I kind of forgot he was even in the league. 
Listen, so, if they're giving Robert Tunyon like a five nuts. and a half yard line, they're, everyone's getting a line. I guess that's, you get a that's line, true. You get Isn't a line. that such a lock, though? I like that. That feels lot, like yeah. the greatest pick we've had so far yeah. on this show. Feels good. Uh, We're definitely whiffing on it. He's definitely catching a 40 yarder. Oh, yeah. just one stupid bomb. The Bears. It would be against the Bears. I guess my Bears pick, I got to act confident on this one. My Bears pick is Cole Komet over 34 and a half yards. We just talked about he always is an easy tight end one. 34 and a half is very doable. He's hit this in both games that Tyson Bajan has started, He's averaging 46 yards a game on the season. That's my math. They don't really have a reception line for me to crunch it down, but uh, been there, done that. He's going to do that. What's his other line that he has? Oh, that's it. It's yeah. just 34. They don't okay. have many res- Bears stats. Yannick Ngakwe. Down to 1.5. 1.5 spicy chili sacks. Yeah, there's, there's no other Bears lines I like. Everyone else is a touchdown or I could take DJ Moore yards. Bears lines are roughs out here. I like the revenge game narrative. What's his, what are Moore's lines at? 53 receiving and total. No receptions, like tough. Or touchdown, 2x. I wouldn't mind flirting with that, to be honest. Ooh. Yeah, DJ Moore's got to get a touchdown this game. A 2x? Yeah, I like that. Let's what? slip that in. Spring, DJ sprinkle Moore, on the touchdown, 2x. Touchdown, revenge game. Mm-hmm. He's due. Uh huh. Dante Foreman, does he have a touchdown? Chili? 1.25. Really? Favored. What? Oh, they do have Khalil on here. 1.75. That's some bullshit. That is bullshit. Dante, though, I'm telling you. Sneaky good. Sneaky good start yeah, this week. Apparently he's favored. Sneaky the goat. Those are the locks. All right, take us out. <laughs> <laughs> Unfor- unfortunately, we have to Friedman's say something can wait. about the win. Yeah, let's let's take our picks here. So we got Carolina plus three and a half. We've got the Bears minus three and a half. Panthers are so banged up. They're so bad. They're on the road. Chicago. What you guys start? I'm going to take the Panthers, plus three and a half. My logic is both these teams are dog shit. You're giving me three and a half points. You're giving me the hook. Give me the points. That's that's fair. I like that. I think that's logical. I think that's sound. I think that's the right side. But me personally, I've lost far too much money on the Panthers for the last year and a half. I'm just simply not doing it. I'm fed up. Sprinkle Bears money line. It's not even like, like that's a tough bet to be honest. Like that's there's no ins- guarantee. Yeah, minus one seventy five to have to for the Bears to needing to win with fucking Bajan. Yeah. Oh man. Three and a half is too much. This needs to be three. Yeah. The line needs to be two and a half or three. I think it's gonna move to three. I think this was kind of anticipating that Justin Fields was gonna play, and I think now that well, no, this is up to date. I just got I got this like up up to date. Like right when we right before we did this. Yeah. It's still three and a half. Yeah. Okay, fucking, I'm taking the Panthers. And it's also, I mean, it's moving towards... Um, the bear side? Well, you can see it, like the odds. It's minus 115 on the top, minus 105 on the top. So, so they're less likely. So so it is moving in the direction of being of a three. Panthers. Yeah. Yeah. It is moving in the direction of being three, three. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. I think at three, I like the Bears. But the hook's huge because this feels like a three-point game. Mm-hmm. It also feels like a massive under. That's what I feel really good about. I, this feels like... Both of these teams, I feel like exchange shitty kickers and there's going to be miss a dude, miss Eddie Pinero? dude i was about to say how many times has eddie pinero been on both of these teams dude not just, just once sh- cairo santos too, back and I forth feel like dude cairo santos probably so they many suck <laughs> what is up with these two teams just exchanging eddie garbage? pinero's at like one and a half extra points i kind of want to take the higher on that you think they're gonna score two touchdowns the, what the, team is Eddie Pinero even kicking for? The Panthers. They're I, was, I would have put I money was, on the Bears. I, I would have put money on the Bears sure about on that. that. He's uh, the one who hit the game winner versus the Texans like six times. I think yeah. me and you watched that. I'm, I'm finna pass on that. Oh, <laughs> I'm going. I'll, I'm taking the Panthers plus three and what, a half. Okay. What about this name? Joey Sly. Joey he was Sly. a Panther. He's he feels also, like a bear. I think he's on the he? Commanders. I think now. the Panthers actually just roster like three or four kickers, <laughs> and they're all bad. They're like, this is our entire <laughs> offense. This is an important position. Okay. I'm taking. Three I mean, and a half is a stupid line. I can't take either side of this shit. I know. Under you can't take the Bears at three minus three and a half. You can't. Tyson you cannot. a Tyson Bajan led Bears team. That's insane. Okay, what side are you taking? The Panthers. <laughs> You're taking the Panthers? Yeah. Okay, we can't all be on the Panthers then. I'm gonna take the Bears. Okay. I'm gonna take the Bears simply because that's the side let's, I want. Let's make root. a parlay. Let's make a one parlay with us three. Us two will take the Panthers, you take the Bears. Are the Bears gonna win this? Sneaky Bears? I mean they could is this win a trap? It, like, this is trappy. The Bears hundred percent could trap. win this game. It's just not like three and a half. You go, is it a trap? Games. Like the Bears are literally favored <laughs> to win the game. Could Bears win it? They want us to pick the Panthers. I'm taking the Panthers and I'm oh. taking this this feels like thirty seven. The 30. Bears are this 30. 30. <laughs> 37 thirty seven. Two bad defenses were hitting sixty. <laughs> yeah. The Bears are one and zero on Thursday night football this year. Any chance that this is actually like an electric game? There's been a bunch of games like that this year. I feel like all of them have involved the Colts and like the Browns somehow. But that's but Colts have 
a sneaky good offense with no, a terrible thanks. defense, which leads to shootouts. It wasn't like a real argument I was making. <laughs> it was more of like everyone expects it to be so bad that like, you know. Just got to fade everybody once in a while. Uh, yeah. Fuck it. Over. No. <laughs> <laughs> Going over. That's so low. It's honestly It doesn't not. even feel that low it's at this point. Yeah. way too It's low. a <laughs> trap. It's a trap to Dude, take the uh, under. They, we're in store for a shootout. <laughs> 38 and a half. Dude, I feel like 40's been the average of this season. Mm-hmm. Like 38 and a half for these teams, that's ridiculous. What do you mean you don't know? This is going to be a 14 to 3 game. <laughs> <laughs> so you think one team's going to win by 11? Sure. Dude, I might have to go back to the Bears. <laughs> you know why? Because Bryce Young's throwing two touchdowns to the other team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Colts bad picks. defense did just fine. <laughs> he threw three fucking picks last game. Not three pick sixes though. Two no, but two pick it. sixes. Like Sucked. that was the only it's reason so our bad. defense, our defense, we had the number one defense, except for mm-hmm. fucking Bryce Young ruined that. Yo, the Colts got Bryce number Young one. Really costed us that extra point in slips. Yeah. Somehow that didn't even get me above JMO. I feel like you gained points on me last week. Somehow I think Sexy's uh. fucking <laughs> chopping off like two points of mine each week. <laughs> I was thinking about that. No one's fact checking. No. Uh, One week, I, like I said, I switched to two uh, like mid picks, and he didn't change it. I just like lost out on it. Sexy is simply just slowly putting whoever he wants in last place to see go take a. Fucking I'm telling trip. you, and it's me. It's 100 percent me. He's been chopping points. It's like it's skimming money, like in a movie. It's like <laughs> he didn't think we're making 10 million dollars a year. He don't think we'd notice him taking 25k out of it each year. That's what he's doing out here. One point here. This fantasy defense here, I know what he's up to. You would rather travel across the globe than do a little math every week. Facts. <laughs> Recheck. There ain't no way I'm checking that shit. <laughs> there ain't no way I'm looking at that. I don't trust sexy, but like the, the delta between my trust and my effort towards that, not not equaling it out. Yo, that's fucking wild. All right, trivia. Please take us away. All right, take, us Friedman's. take us away. Yo, what'd you get from Friedman? Yeah, what'd you get from goat, the free goats? Wings and a two in a roll. A two, two in a roll. roll. Interesting. I'm proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. That's huge for us. <laughs> I've had it before. What? Yo, wait, what else is in the tuna? It's tuna and what? Rice. That's it? Is it like sushi? Like a, a It's like, like, yeah, a piece of rice or just tuna laying on top. Is it just one? Or is it like a roll, like a sushi it's roll, like, like a full pieces. one? Six pieces. Okay. But it's not like a circle. It's just a, like a bed of rice with the sushi on top times six. I'm going to have to eat one to see what you really mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to eat three or four. <laughs> it's only six. Just to make sure they're okay for you. I told him to hold the jalapenos, though. Mm. You don't like spicy? I don't like green. <laughs> <laughs> I love spicy, but I don't like green. <laughs> no, the, yeah, there's spicy mayo on it. I'll try the wings for you, too. You just don't like, the, you just don't like green. I don't like green food. Like money green. Green food. Underdog like picks green be going food. in that direction. All right, take us away. I don't like green Hungry. food. Vegetables. I know where you were going. Is there? I know where you. Is there been. anything green besides vegetables? Avocado is not a vegetable. Watermelon. It's a fruit on the outside. <laughs> you don't eat <laughs> no. the green part though. It's green. <laughs> you show up with a watermelon. He's like, I won't eat the outside. You man. eat grapes though. Yeah, I, like I feel grapes. like a grape guy. I like grapes. Purp- a green grapes. I don't really care. A lot. Of, some. A lot of people have like hard stances on green yeah. versus purple for some reason. I don't care. Take his away. Hold on. What? Now you want to hold no, no, on? No, no, I didn't pick my over under. I don't care. Okay. That's our Thursday night preview. I'm taking Panthers plus three. Big over. Tony's taking the Bears. Thank You're you for watching. You're going to give up the hook? <laughs> I don't <laughs> even need it. You want to be that Such generous? A trap. You're going to donate Panthers it to me? Panthers money line. <laughs> That's our Thursday night Not preview. Bad, bad. Give us a like. Give us a sub. Peace. Give us some love. <laughs> Give us some Friedman. You can We should have it where it like cuts out and it comes back into Jamal being like just naming different things to give us. Give us some love.